theyeshiva.net. Good chaydesh, everybody, and welcome. So you understood the two types of davening that we discussed. Yeah. There's the chotzer, and there's the bias. When we came to Asher, Asher and Yosheh, we sat there and sat to go into the house. Yeah. To go into the house. Asher, Yosheh, Vesecha, yeah. Not only in the courtyard, you say. Right. Very good. Not only to be in the chotzer. So there's one experience of davening and learning where the person really goes, goes into the Isis. The Isis have so much Kedusha. The Isis are full of divine energy. They contain divine energy, and that's why they're called Chatzeris. They're passageways through which the divine energy, which is basically Isis, come in. Even though the whole world is made up of divine DNA. The whole ma- the world is made up of a divine program code which we call, you know, every, every organism has its DNA. But that's called Chatzar HaChitzayna. And then there's Chatzar HaPnimis, that's Isis HaTayr, Isis HaTfila, which in a revealed way expressed the, the divine. Where in the whole creation you have to dig, you have to excavate, you have to search. So there's that derech in Avaydas Hashem where you really connect to the Isis, you fully go into the Isis. The Baal Shem Tev said a beautiful word about the Mabel. Hashem tells Noyach, boy el ha go into the Teva. Teva means a box, an ark. Teva of Noyach. But Teva, of course, also means a word, right? Rashi Tevis means the beginning of words. Teva is a word. So the Baal Shem Tev says, when there's a flood out in the world, the Rabbi Nishlodim tells Noyach, take yourself and your wife and your children, Go into every word. Go into the word. Don't let the word remain outside of you. There's me and there's the word. You go into the word. Go into the words. There's a word from the Holy Lechevich. He once said, the Magad of Lechevich once said, it's a very, a very insightful idea, I think, for today's day. Teva means words. So he said, whenever there's a flood outside, you have to take your wife and your children and, and, and their wives, you have to take your family. Boy el ha Enter into dialogue with them. Enter wow. into a conversation with them. The Lechevich. Who's Lechevich? I really saw with eight chicks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in other words what was you say something very very powerful when there's a flood outside don't take things for granted you have to have conversations with your family you have to enter into a dialogue don't expect like many parents and grandparents do that by osmosis right. things will just transfer you know you'll be like your father your zayda your elta zayda it doesn't work that way anymore or you hide you run away from huh? or you run away from yeah boy you have to speak you have to have conversations. You have to enter in the. You have to know what's going through their mind. You have to know what's going through their heart. You have to know what's their experience of the world. What's their experience of Judaism? Powerful, huh? Yeah. Teva. Enter into dialogue. Teva is words. You have to talk and you have to listen. Part of part of allowing a part of going into the Teva is allowing somebody else to talk to, not just you. He says, you can't go in yourself. You have to take you, he says, Ubanecha and your wife, and the shape Banecha. The whole Mishpach has to go into dialogue. Huh? Some cipher. That's what you mean. Some cipher that we spoke about. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> He's saying in the dialogue you have to have place for the animals and for the garbage. Very good. As are kids. You have to allow everything to come out. Yeah. You have to have a place for the garbage, but but a place. Yeah. So. So what? So what's the also, idea? Also, you have to recognize what is garbage. Of course, that's part of the dialogue. <laughs> that's part of the dialogue to recognize what garbage is. So, as a result of this, what does it mean to go into the world? On this, there's two different p'chinas. One is just to go into the words themselves. The words have power. And you could get carried away by the words, carried away in a good way. 
you could soar through the words. And there were always Jews who did that and do that. They soared through the words. The Gemara has an expression, Ha'aren noiseyes noisav. The Aaron carries its carriers. You're carrying the Aaron, but you're really being carried by it. You're saying the words, but the words have their own momentum, their own dynamic, their own energy. And you could fly through the words. The words are also wings that allow you to soar, to hang on to the plane, to hang on to the plane, and to fly with the words. But for this, you have to allow yourself to melt in the words. And he says, Gamzu Derech Yishor, this is a big avoid. It's true with Torah and it's true with Tefillah. Both the Isis of Torah and the Isis of Tefillah. And this is the ecstasy, the electricity that a Yiddish and a Shama experiences, the Nichsef of a Gamkol Sanafshi, Lechatzros, basically, Lechatzros Hashem. I'm looking for the Chatzor of Hashem, the Oisius. That's always the Chatzor. Why is that the Chatzor? Chatzor is a passageway. That's what you have to remember. You don't live in a Chatzor. You don't live in a, you live in a, Chatzor is a passageway, which is why there's the whole concept of Chatzor in Halacha. A Chatzor is a semi Rishus HaRabim in Halacha. It's really a Rishus HaYochit. But the Chachamim, Shloim HaMalech, was masakin that what, you shouldn't be able to carry in a Chatzor on Shabbos? A courtyard shared, let's say, by 20 neighbors. You can't throw a ball there or walk around or carry things. Why? Because it's doim al Rishus HaRabim. It has, it has the appearance of a public domain because so many families use it, like the hall of an apartment building. Unless you make an Erev, right? You take food from all the people and you put it in one house, so it's considered one courtyard shared by one family and everyone are guests of this family. Allah is of Erev Chatseris in Meseches, in Meseches Erev. So therefore, a Chatser is basically a passageway. That's what it's used for. You keep things there, you go into your house, you go out of your house, like the whole of an apartment building. You go out of your house, the mailboxes, the people, the kids play, etc. So what's the idea here? That the oasis are basically the passageway from the Ein Soif into the Nivrayim. So that's why the oasis are called the Chatseris, because basically that is how the Chios comes from the Ein Soif and creates all Neshomis and Malachim and Oilemis and worlds, Chitzayni is dikka things, Primi is dikka things, divine realities, unholy realities, physical realities, spiritual realities, all through Isis. Even though the last mimer was Vayipach Vapav, it was like mouth to mouth. The Neshama. Yeah. The Neshama. Uh-huh. And here is... Here we're talking about all the whole cosmos, all of the worlds. You're right, the Neshama <laughs> is Vayipach. Here we're talking about the world is Basara Mamoris Nivra Oilem. Bidvar Hashem Shamayim Nasu Veruch Bev Kod Swam. In fact, that's the uniqueness of a neshama where it says, Vayipach ba'ap of neshmas chayim. doesn't say it anywhere else. doesn't say Hashem blew in a soul into the animals, into the mammals, into the fish, into the galaxies, into the, into the, into the, into the, into the moon. Over there, it's over. Vayoymer elikim. Vayoymer elikim tatsheyaretz. Vayoymer elikim yimer esperikiyo shamayim. Vayoymer elikim yishritu amayim, etc. Now, so this is one avoid. You get carried away in the oasis. One, he says, but it's still a chatzar. It's exposed. The rain could fall. Why could the rain fall? There's no roof. Your machshava is engaged. Your essence is not engaged. Your thoughts are engaged. Your mind is not engaged. And because your mind is not engaged, because you're just going into the words, but it's the words themselves, the letters themselves, not what is inside of them, so your thoughts are engaged fully, but not your mind, and therefore other thoughts could come and distract. The next level is where you go into the bias, which is also made up of Isis. A chatzir is built of Isis, and a bias is built of Isis. Everything is built of Isis. Everything is built of Avonim. A courtyard has four walls. That's what makes it a courtyard. It's not a public domain. It has four walls. Four walls are made usually out of stone, Avonim. So therefore it's Isis, but a bias is also Isis, but a bias already has a roof, it's much more protected. What does this mean? This means, he says, you go into the depth, you go into the word, not only to the word itself, you go to what, what's inside the word, what's inside the letter, the message in the letter. Pirish Hamil is the meaning of the words. It engages not only your thoughts, but your entire mind. In Pirish Hamil itself, there are layers and layers and layers, how deep? As he says, there's a heichel of Asiya, a bias of Asiya, a bias of Yitzira, bias. that's deeper, Sayin Torah, Sayin Tefillah. There's the Pshat of Torah, and in Pshat itself there are many layers, and then there's higher lay- layers of Torah, all the way to Sayin Tzatar. That's the bias. The Balatanya finishes this parak. 
the end of Perik Beis, you see the last two lines, the last three lines of Perik Beis. All this is a description of the beautiful and gracious Kala. Let's go back. He said there's two types of Kalas. One Kala, two, the same Pasuk. You start with the first cup, I think, all the way on the previous page. Yes. Wow. Wow. Tehillim Kapitel 84, Pei Dalet Posse Gimel. Nixifer v'gam kol sonafshi l'chatsris adinoi, libi upsari yiranen nuel elchoi. Pei Dalet Posse Gimel. Pei Rik Beidal Posse Gimel. I think I said once Lachatris base Hashem, which is a mistake. It's only Chatris, it's not base, it's Chatris. My soul yearns for the Chatzir of Hashem. My heart and my flesh dance to the living God. When you read this Pasuk and Tehillim, like many Pasukim and Tehillim, it seems like he's just being poetic. Essentially, he's redundant. My soul yearns, craves, goes out to the courtyard of Hashem. My heart and my flesh dance to the living God. You don't repeat yourself, so he says it in a different way. But Latanya says, no, 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 it's two separate kalas, it's two separate experiences of Yiddishkeit, it's two klois nafsh. One, you see, one he speaks about nafshi, the other one he speaks about libi ufsari, my heart and my meat, my flesh, my flesh, not nafshi. The first he speaks about chatzras Hashem, the second he speaks about kel choy, not chatzras. The first he speaks about kolsa, I yearn, the second is Yerananu, Rina, Zimra, I dance, I sing, I, I celebrate. All these differences. So now, he says, all that we spoke about, we started to say there's two types, every Jew is a Kala, Knesset Yisrael is a Kala. There's two types of Kalas represented in the Machlaikas of Bishameh and Bishilil, Kala Kamayshi, Kala Nova Chasudah. He starts off, Biura Inyin. Oisius are called Avonim. You don't know where he's going. Was Oisius, who's talking about Oisius? On this he explains that what? That Chatseris represents the Oisius. That are Doimim, Lagabi, the Ein Soif, even though they're all there. But they become the Shefa. They become the, the passageway. They become the, the, the Hamshacha Sachai. Is basically, this is what is the passageway from Ein Soif to the world. <coughs> And therefore you have Nafshi, which basically represents Dovid HaMelech, represents the mucker of Knesset Yisrael, it's called Nafshi, the harp that contains the melodies of Klal Yisrael, which yearns to go back to its source. And in Avoida it is what? He wants to connect through Oisius Atari Vatfila, and in that itself there could be the Chatzar and there could be the Bayis. He finishes, this is all Kala Nova Chasuda. The Hainu Misha Kol Yom of Betoris Hashem Chefze. This is a Jew that his whole life, and he was speaking, there were Jews like this, his whole life, his cheftza, his pleasure, his tainug, is in Teres Hashem, for lo yisar mi men a yom and a smoil. He doesn't derail from it, not right and not left. V'nafshay ha'lekis hiya ikris boy. The soul that rules his life, the soul that is the primary reality in his life. Everyone has two souls, an animal soul and a divine soul. But what's the soul that ultimately is the Iker of his life? He lives with his divine soul. So I understand. The Kalun of the is both of the Avodos, the Chotzer, yeah. and the Bayes? Yeah. In other words, either this way or this way. Both are but both, like he said, Gamzu Derech Yishar, there's also a great Derech. It's also a correct Derech. So both of those are enough. So both of this, this is a summation of the Jew who experiences Kala, Klois Nefesh. And when you look at this Jew, you say, he's no, he's Chasuda. In other words, his life is a life of a relationship with Hashem. What is the death? What does it mean? His nefesh alakis is the main soul in him. Nafsh alakis ya ikris boy. This is the soul that sees the focus of life as dveikus in Hashem. The focus of life is I'm one with Hashem. I'm intimate with Hashem. That's what the soul wants. The soul looks for truth. The soul looks for dveikus with ein soif. The soul is yearning for emes, twenty four hours a day to be one with truth. To be one with the source of truth, to be one with God. And therefore, this is the person. Torah and Tfilah is the method of Dvekas. Oisisa Torah Vatfila. 
That's the nichsef of a gamkol sanafshi for dveikas, and therefore he cleaves to Isis HaTorah, he cleaves to Isis HaTfilah. Torah and Tfila, that's the hallmark of his life. That's what he looks forward to. Now comes Peter Gimel, now comes another type of Jew. You could raise your hand by these two descriptions. There's a Kala Nova Chasuda, and now there's a second Kala. Now we have to remember back the Machleikas Bishame and Basila, because it's all from that Machleikas. What happened? They asked Ketzad Merak and Lifneha Kala. How do you dance? Bishama said Kala Kamarsha. Every Kala, you just got to look at what she is and discuss the Milas. Basila says, no. Every Kala, you say the same thing. She's beautiful and gracious. Frek Bishama, what if she's not? <laughs> what if she's a Chigere Soisuma? That's, that's his expression. What if she's lame or blind? In other words, it's hard to say, Kala no. Torah says, Midvar Shakatirchak. Basila says, you do it anyway. You say, Kala no. So as you said, for her husband, she's beautiful. Yeah? The Gemara says in Saita, Shalosh Chinez Hein, Chein Isha Al Baila. A normal marriage, there's always the Chein of a wife by her husband. There's a Chein, there's a grace. He chose her. In his eyes, she must be beautiful. Okay, that's how people shot. Shammai says, how do you say Nova Chasuda? She's not? In other words, Shammai, so what's that's the Machlech? About physically, about blindness. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're talking spiritually. We don't mean it here physically. The whole, the whole mime is spiritual. That's the whole idea that Torah could be understood on many. Uh... The words that he's using is not. Yeah, and he's just using the Lashna Gemara. He always uses Lashna Gemara. The Gemara says, Chigeris is Summa. Chigeris means lame. And Summa means, uh, Summa means blind. So he's using, he's just using it. So, in other words, so, 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 so the like I'll peep shot. What's the machlaikas? The machlaikas is, if you could say on every kalanov, the basil says, yeah, Bishamai says not. The Balatanya says, on a deeper level, they're talking about two kalas. They're not, argue. every machlaikas, there's truth here and there's truth here. A real machlaikas is not right and wrong. It's right and right. Depends on the context, depends on the time, depends on the person, depends on the space. Then there's halacha. Allah is how you do it. But Ela Bel Divra Lakim Chayim means it's right and right. And their perspective. Yes, and the perspective has a truth to it. Sometimes, on some views, you're not going to say it's Divra Lakim Chayim. You're not going to say every view in the world is of words of the living God. We're not gonna, some people would like to say that about themselves, but it's not always that way. Sometimes it's not the words of the living God. Sometimes it's the words of the living God, the way he's concealed in many, many layers of husks. <laughs> but Divriya Lekim Chayim means it's Divriya Lekim Chayim. It's a Gilea Lekos. It's Emes. Bishamai came from Gvurim. Bishamai came from Chesed. There's truth in each view. Sometimes there's no one solution to every problem. There's different perspectives, and they're legitimate perspectives. It's one of the things that the Jewish people have a hard time embracing. There could be two perspectives, and they're both the words of the living God. The same God says, Yoynes and Bni Oymekach. Yeah? And the other one says this, Divri Elikim Chaya. Elikim is Lashen Rabbim, it says in Tanya. Elikim is Lashen Rabbim. The Mokr HaChayim is not one. The Mokr HaChayim is diversified. Doesn't mean the Halacha is like everybody. The Halacha is not like everybody, but it's Divri Elikim Chaya. So you have to learn it, you have to understand it, you have to appreciate it. Not only that, it's important to know the other view in order to understand your view. Because if you don't understand the other view, then your view becomes a very narrow view. Only when you see the other view can your view be experienced in a much broader way, in a much profounder fashion. At kedekach, that in halacha, there's a peladik gemara in Sanhedrin, and it's pasch in the Rambam in Hilcha Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin shapaschu kulam lechayva, paitrim Imagine, a man does something, criminal act, and he comes to Besdin, and you have 71 members. And immediately they all open up and say, Guilty! You know what they do? They send them home. They send them home. If 70 say guilty and one says innocent, and they argue, and then they pass in guilty because it's 70 against one, then he's penalized, whatever the penalty is. If 71 say guilty, he's off the hook. So it's a very strange halach. 
just because the guy is a massive criminal that nobody dares to defend him. That's why he's Paitanay Samiyad, you get away with murder. The Pshat is, the Mepharshimri, the Medrash Mul brings in Pirkei the Rambam changes a little bit the Gemara. The Rambam is a Sanhedrin Shaposcho Kulam Lechayva. The problem is, immediately they said guilty. There was no debate. If there was no debate, Halacha doesn't accept it. Halacha does not accept something in which there were no opposing views. Why? Because as long as you didn't hear an opposite perspective, we're not sure your perspective is coming from broadness. Maybe it's coming from narrowness. It's the opposite perspective that allows you to see your own perspective from a much more mature way. That's how you have to understand Machleikas in Judaism. So Machleikas is not just a psa b'dyevet. It's a lechatchila. It's not a psa bad thing. There's, there's something very powerful about it. Because in our world, that's how you reach truth. You reach truth through understanding the broadness of every subject. Asher lechein. And therefore... When we speak about two shittas here, it's not Beshamai, Beshila, they're, they're both right. And the way he reconciles it in this Maimir is that they're actually talking about two different kalas. <laughs> they're talking about two brides. It's a tzvei kalas, it's a dinim. It's not the same bride. They're talking about two. Beshilal is talking about one kala. About her, you take a say, no, because that's what Beshilal saw. Beshamai says, I'm talking about kala kamay shahi. I'm talking about a kala who's kamayshi, a filo chigeris, a filo so. Well, Tanya says, Taka tu yid. There's a yid who's the pchin of kala, nova chasuda, kol sa nafshi lechatris Hashem. That's one Jew. Now, achmisha hevedes haderech. Somebody who hevedes haderech, hevedes haderech means he transgressed the derech. As they say today, he went off the derech. He passed, off, he passed off from the derech. Shehu pchin is chigeris haisuma. This is what Chazal call lame or blind. Vasab is lame or blind. It's a metaphor. Kamashe Kasev, we say in Halil, a nayim lahem v'lo yiru. As nayim lahem v'lo yishmu. Af lahem v'lo yirichun. Yideim v'lo yimishun. Rag lehem v'lo yahalechun. They have eyes, but they don't see. They have feet. They have legs, but lo yahalechun. So you call them a summa yichigeres. V'nav she'abamis yishem eshalaz boy. Now the contrast. The animal soul dominates, rules in this person, not the Nefesh Alekis rules. The Nefesh Abahamis rules. Val Cain, Ainley, Kloisa Nefesh, Lechayin, Afshay Alekis. So therefore, he doesn't have Kloisa Nefesh. His soul does not go out to the life of Nefesh Alekis, of his divine soul. So this is a very interesting expression. Kloisa Nefesh, Lechayin, Nefesh Alekis. Kloisa Nefesh doesn't mean he dies. Kloisa Nefesh means his soul goes out, his soul yearns to the life of his divine soul. He wants to live with his soul. He wants to live with his nefesh elikus. He wants to live with his divine soul. He doesn't have that. Not that he doesn't have a nefesh elikus. It's in prison. It's held captive by the body and the biological animal soul. He has two names. Nefesh achiyunis is the biological soul, the soul that gives chiyunius, vitality, which is also called a Bahamas, an animal soul. Both are terms, they're similar, but they're not the same. Nefesh achiyunis means simply the biological electricity, the battery, the engine of the body. A body needs an engine, we know what the body does. The body is an extraordinary machine. It needs a battery, and even Steve Jobs can't create that battery. You need the Reboi to create that battery. And this animal is also a Bahamas. We share this soul with the zoological species. We share this soul with the Bahamas, who also have a tremendous engine and machine, their, their bad battery that gives them consciousness, gives them uh, awareness, gives them instinct, gives them emotion, and of course gives them all the skills that they need in order to live and to survive. Bodily functions, bodily awareness, bodily consciousness. This is the Nefesh of Bahamas. But that remains the focus of life. So if this is the case, this Nefesh Alekis is in prison. Like when somebody is in prison, they can't come out. They're locked up. So the person is unaware of what their divine soul looks like. They don't live it. They don't breathe it. They're not in touch with it. So we can, as we learned many times, we operate on two levels of consciousness. There's the consciousness of the animal soul, the consciousness of the divine soul. The first person also has an animal soul. But he says, boy. He basically, he has it, you know. The nefesh is by the steering wheel. The nefesh is also there, but he's a backseat driver. A little more repressed, but he also barks. 
But the nefesh is by the steering wheel. This person is the other way around. The nefesh Bahamas is by the steering wheel. The nefesh is in prison, can't come out. The person may not even know that he has it, because in prison it's dark, it's locked up. You don't even know, you don't know what's inside of you. So therefore, you could live your whole life, and you're not in touch with that element. You're basically in touch with more base instincts. So you have a whole a person who their whole life is governed by, by insecurity, by anger, by frustration, by fear, by laziness, by sluggishness, by envy, by jealousy, by animosity, all these wonderful emotions. And... Uh, by, by revenge, by resentment. Now, these are all natural emotions. We have them, especially when you experience pain in your life. But I'm not in touch with a part of me that's completely free. It's infinite. It's uninhibited. It's divine. And therefore, there's always joy there, and there's confidence, and there's wholesomeness, and there's holiness, and there's purity, and there's optimism. So it's two different people, two different colors. So what is... His advice for this person. He kala. Don't think that he's not a kala. Here's the eight said that even this Jew is a kala. And what did we touch kala? Klois on Ah, you just said he's in prison. This is the Khidish Abishama. The Kala Vizi is. Vizi gate, Vizi state and gate, as she is. I, she's not, no, she's not chasudah, I'm fine. Kala kemoyshi, as she is. Ah, you look at yourself, you say you're in prison. Yeah? You're this, you're that, look at yourself. You're completely in prison. Your nefesh Bahamas is the only voice, or at least the primary voice in you. That's the word. Kala kemoyshi, as she is. And as Beishama explains, afilu chigeres, afilu sumo. Enayim I can't, I don't, I don't have vision. My legs are not taking me to where I want to go. I have to go somewhere. I'm a couch potato, basically. You don't go where you have to go, or you don't go b'chlal, or you go to the wrong places. You don't see. Everything you shouldn't see, you do see. What you need to see, you don't even know it exists. You can't see it. There's an expression in Chesidus, A behemah never saw heaven. Simple but profound. We don't think about this. But if you have a behavior in your backyard, it's wonderful. They never saw the sky. That means something. It means the behemoth is alive and the behemoth is cute and the behemoth is geschmack and the behemoth is interesting and etc. But so came on the and the himmel. You can't blame it. You can't blame the sheep or the goat or the bull or the cow for never looking up and saying, Wow. Wow. Me Borele, who created this universe? Where did this come from? The behemoth sees the hay. Now some of us are exactly the same thing. I mean, physically we could look up, but all we see is the hay. <laughs> some people look up and they still only see the hay. We don't call it hay, we call it ice cream, whatever we call it. Cheesecake, shvuas is coming. But uh, let's keep our priorities straight. But the point is, the behemoth came on the Zenda Himmel. So that's Kala Kamar Shahi, the Kala as she is. In Yiddish, there's an expression, gate, as he stands and walks. In other words, in Baba Metziah, there's an expression, Heilach. What's Heilach? Hare shalcha lefanecha. This is yours, here it is. Heilach. Huh? Hare shalcha lefanecha. That's Kala Kamay Shehi. This is what it is. The Kala as she is. Nisht Sugeputz. There's no jewelry. We're not covering anything up as you are. As this behemoth is, the Nefesh Bahamas dominates, Kala Kamoshi, he's a Kala. What's the Vart? Even though it's not his animal soul, we're calling him lame or blind. It doesn't prevent him from being a Kala, it's not his godly soul. Ah, you told me his godly soul is in prison. The answer is, I did chinus libi of sorry yiranu nu al kelch. Now you come to the second half of the pasuk. When David Amalek says nixuf of agam kol sa nafshi lechatzus Hashem, libi of sorry yiranu nu al kelch. He's talking about two kalas, two Jews. 
One is nixif I'm called so naf The other one, his nefesh is in prison. He could still be a kala. Why? Because he looks at himself that he's spiritually blind or spiritually lame. It's not his animal soul. But when it's not his godly soul, he's still a kala. I, the godly soul, is in prison. The answer is, Libi of Sari Yerananu, not Lechatris Hashem. Yerananu El Kael Choy. What's the Havana? Kihine, now you have to focus on the change of David HaMelech. The beginning he speaks about the soul, at the end he speaks about the heart and the flesh. That's very different. The soul, by definition, is a spiritual entity. Libi Upsari are physical entities. There's a heart that you can hold in your hand. And the basar is basar, it's flesh. It's a stick flesh. It's a piece of meat. That's what it is. It's a piece of meat. You hold a steak in your hand, you hold the chicken in your hand, and you hold your flesh in your hand. It's physical. He went from nafshi to libi of sari. But here there's a paradox. You would think the nefesh reaches deeper. By the nefesh, he said, I yearn for chatzros, Hashem, for the courtyards of God. My flesh dances. Not to the courtyard, to the living God, Kel Choy, directly. Not Chatzres, Libiv Sori Yanol Kel Choy. So what happens here? Kihine Seher Azoy. Here you have the Alter Rebbe in his uh, full original glory. Kihine Haleva Habosor, the heart and the meat, the flesh, Lefishem Kelem Gashmim, because they're physical containers. They're physical instruments, they're physical components of the body. You can't expect the flesh and the heart, even though they're amazing. I mean, the, what the heart does for you, it's amazing what the heart does. The heart is a genius, right? The heart is a genius, a genius beyond, beyond what, 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 what people learn in the, for a thousand years, you can't figure out what the heart does in an hour, what the heart does. The goyness, how it has it figured out. And it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. There's no such a thing, I'm taking vacation. I also need a weekend, Memorial Day weekend. Yeah? And when the heart does go on vacation, uh, you don't <laughs> come a, back. It's a vacation. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a vacation. Prolonged vacation. Prolonged vacation. Huh? Right. Yeah. That's his nightmare, you're saying. Some vacations are other people's nightmares. Yeah. So he says, don't think, he says, it's Kalem Gashman, it's Kalem Gashman. But you can't expect that it should have a chuka, it should have a chef, it should have a desire to the source of its own life, which is Ein Saif. Hamashpir, even though every, all the energy, the wisdom of the heart and the flesh all comes from the Ein Saif. But you can't expect them to experience a chukah for that. Why? Even though usually we like to go back to our source. We want to be connected to our source. It's one of the greatest pleasures in life to be connected to your source. Because that is who you really are. Nonetheless, you can't expect it. Because remember, the restrictions and the veils of the chayas of Hashem are so heavy, are so strong in terms of quality and v'rabu l'ma'oid in terms of quantity. He says two things, gavru and rabu. Gavru means it's powerful, rabu means many. There's so many curtains and veils. There's so many powerful curtains and veils. Behelem achahelem, concealment after concealment. Remember, from the energy of Ein Sof to be translated into a physical art, it has to go through a whole evolution in which the chius is concealed and is, and is degraded state after state after state, and in each state it becomes more, more coarse, less divine, until it assumes a physical nature. So you can't expect the lave and the basar to experience the mucker of its chius and to crave it. Unlike the nefesh, which does not go through so many tzimtzumim emesachim, it remains a divine entity remains a transcendental entity. You can't expect them to have the experience of the nefesh to yearn for chatzro Hashem. What's chatzro Hashem? You remember? The oisius, the divine DNA from where you come from. You're looking to go back to yourself. You're looking to go back to your own mokr lechatzros Hashem shul mokr v'chayi nefesh. The nefesh wants to go to its mokr. You can't expect this from the Levim Basar. 
You know what they could do? They could start dancing to the living God. Why? Hashem not yeah? For who? The lave and the boss are capable when the person thinks about what is the concept of real emunah in Hashem. What do we mean emunah mitis b'ashem? That he transcends even what we usually call soiv of kalaman, which already means transcendent. Soiv of kalaman means he transcends the worlds, he encompasses the worlds, he surrounds the worlds, meaning he's above the worlds, he's beyond that. He's not in the realm of almond of worlds. That doesn't define him. You hear what he says? Based on our poor intellect, we have no way of comprehending him, and we need a name. So we say, who is he? So we say, and he fills all the worlds. And then we want to become more sophisticated. So we say, we thought that was such high stuff. That was such garbage. Trash, you already told us last year. So, so, so basically, I need a piece of vocabulary. So what am I going to tell you? I have to say something. So we say the word God. So what the Balatanya is trying to say, the word God doesn't really mean anything. The word God is a nice term that we invent. Basically, this is very sharp words. The word God is a God that's created in our own image. Whenever we speak about God, we're creating him in our own image. Some people create statues and some people create words. We're not good with statues, but we're good with words. <laughs> the Jews are good with words. What did we do for thousands of years? The Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Greeks, the Romans were building gymnasiums and stadiums and coliseums. And what were we doing? We were sitting and arguing. That's what we were doing. They were building, and we were building words. Talmud Bavli, Talmud Yerushalmi, Sifra, Sifri, Mechilta, Tesefta, Mishnah, Braisa. We were building with words, Avonim. We have different Avonim. We still do that, yeah? We still do that. For a Jew to lose an argument is worse than to lose a war. Israel wasn't defeated on the battlefield. It was defeated in the world of words. Israel was defeated in the world of the UN, in the world of the State Department, in newspapers, by university professors. Israel was not defeated on the battlefield. Jews know how to fight like lions, but with words? Who? That's where they experience life, in words. So therefore, if you think about this, <coughs> how do we get into words? So <laughs> ah, words. So we create, some people create gods, statues, some people create them through words, but it's also a creation. Bredesha says man was created in God's image. The first thing, what does that mean? Good question. But what it, also, what it for sure means is that God was not created in man's image. Man was created in God's image. So the Balatanya says, Mamala Kalaman and Saiv of Kalaman is basically a God that we create in our image. You know, we want to describe. And he's not criticizing it. He's saying, Lefisich Leinu Adal. We need a vocabulary. So really, we shouldn't say the word Hashem, we shouldn't say the word God. We sh Why? Because we should be honest. We should say, I don't know. He is who he is. Yeah. Eka He is who he is. Yeah. It is. It is. And even it, even it, we have a picture of it. A boy named it, right? We have a picture of it. Okay, this is it, and this is it, but we have a picture. It. It is something. A concept is it, and a person is it, right? And the mo everything is it. It's a thing, whether it's a physical thing or a spiritual thing. So lefi sechleinu hadal, we give names. Not that he's saying that Hashem is not mamalek alalman. He is mamalek alalman, but that's not who he is. <laughs> not that he, he's not saying he's not mamalek alalman. They say there was once a Jew. He considered himself a big atheist. So he came to the Baditshava, and he said. You know, I really don't believe in God. So he said, the God you don't believe in, I also don't believe in. <laughs> now that's a very profound idea. People say, I don't believe, you know? I also don't believe. The God 
that you say you don't believe in. Trust me, I don't believe in that God. In other words, we agree more than we disagree. But we often don't go to that space. I don't believe. What don't you believe in? Somebody tells me the other day, the whole Torah for me is worthless. It's worthless. It's meaningless. It's, an, it's a foolish invention. I said, okay, I understand. But now translate to me, what's this Torah that you say is a foolish invention? It turns out for him, Torah is molestation, abuse, and torture. I said, yes, that's a foolish invention. <laughs> that's, a, that's his experience. He doesn't know anything else. For him, that's what Torah is. The Shabbos is Yom Tov. Fortunately, he grew up in a very, very dysfunctional environment. Both at home and in school, it was even worse. So that's his experience. So when he says it's a foolish invention, I, I, I told him, I'll be even sharper than you. It's worse than a foolish invention. <laughs> you always have to describe what it is. The Badr says, you're an atheist? What's this God you don't believe in? This primitive, crazy buffalo. Yeah? who wants to kill you and take revenge, thank God you don't believe in him. You know why he doesn't exist? <laughs> Very good. He said, which God should he thank? Which God should he thank? Now, there is, Rav Cook writes, Rav Ramitzah Gakoyen Cook writes, this is pretty radical stuff, in Oiris, he lived in the early 1900s. He passed away in the 30s. So he says that the atheism that became so prevalent in his day and age, remember the last few hundred years, for, for thousands of years, hundreds of years, and close to thousands, the church dominated the world, either church or Islam. And God, 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 the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Then 300 years ago, the church lost its, its power. Enlightenment brought in science instead of religion. Nietzsche said God is dead, all these types of things. And the new science became the replacement for the old religion. And of course, Judaism was redefined as a result and so forth. So everybody had to find, so to speak, a new way. They had to, they had to go, either they left the religion or they assimilated or they redefined Judaism. You had the reformers, you had everyone. Everyone had to look for something because the old model just, it just came crashing down one day. Everything came crashing down one day. But everybody had to either go deeper or lose it. So there was, that's what that's what Chassidus, Chassidus, Baal Shem Tev, the Alter Rebbe, the, was, it, was, it was revealed when it was revealed for a reason. It wasn't some mistake. The Baal Shem Tev was born in 1698. The Alter Rebbe was born in 1745. These are the years when the European Enlightenment swept through like a raging fire and redefined <laughs> Judaism. You can't understand Judaism today and what's happening if you don't understand what happened 250, 300 years ago. So the question is, how do you respond? How do you deal with it? Do you run away from it? Do you compromise it? Do you make a new Judaism? Oh, so he tainted. He said, what is this, this whole new atheism? He said, basically, the God that people were serving, he said, was an, was an idol. It was a fake God. So he said, sometimes you have to destroy that which is fake in order to come to that which is true. So even though there's a painful process, but he felt that a lot of it was really a necessary prerequisite for people discovering a much deeper relationship with an authentic God. And the first thing you have to know is that all names are problems, including the name God, although we use the name. In fact, in Yiddishkeit, people say Hashem. What does Hashem mean? The name. What's the name? By the, what's the name? What are we, the name? I start calling you the name? Well, really? I don't have a name? But that's the point. The point is, I, 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 I don't have a name for you. All I could say is the name. What do I mean the name? The name is basically the reputation. I'm calling you your reputation. In other words, what I'm saying is, all I know about you is what I experience. It's like your reputation. I have a reputation in your eyes. You have a reputation in my eyes. What does that have to do with you? A fegelich in bosom doesn't have to do with you. It has to do with what I think about you. And what you think about me, as we know, has nothing to do with me. And what I think about you has nothing to do with you. It's usually the exact opposite. If you start listening to people about other people, they know about other people less than I know about salamandras in New Zealand. Even people you grow up with. You don't know anything. People don't know anything about other people. They define people based on their own stereotypes and their own self-image. 
I don't, I don't mean, I'm saying it, I don't mean to use the name creator as an idol. Rebbeinu Shalolim is not an idol. Boyd Ayolim is not an idol. Shaitach Bredesh is bottle of Kibbas HaShemayim V'Sa'aretz. I'm saying in a subtle way, you have to understand that this is how we're defining it. We don't call it an idol. What he says about atheism is that sometimes you have to let go of fake things in order to be able to get to new things. Okay, this was his derech. He went very extreme in this fashion. But really the point here is a very deep point, And that is, when the atheist says God doesn't exist, okay, everything comes from Kedusha. Everything. There's nothing in the world that doesn't come from Kedusha. There's a word from Rabbi Moshe Leib Sasever. They asked him, what's the shayrish of Apikursus in Kedusha? What's the source of heresy in Kedusha? So he said, when somebody needs help. <laughs> when somebody needs help, often people say, ah, the Ebersh of Italfin. <laughs> God is going to help. You have to have a little emunah and betachin. He says, you know what? Zion apikaitis and help him my race. Become a heretic and help him. Stop telling him God is going to help. Let God, yeah. as one Jewish let said, the Ebersh does a health and fire them was a health, right? The Ebersh does a health and he says, there's a health and fire them was a health. God is God, but you have to do what you have to do. You have to act as though you're the person at this moment who who can do something for this person. Yeah. Of course, that itself is a shlichus of Hashem. It's not a bizarre. But I want to say something a little deeper. And that is, the atheist says, God doesn't exist. Okay? It sounds like atheism. But now let's understand the truth. God does exist. God does exist. Who's right? The term existence is a very human term. We say this exists, it doesn't exist. You know, we say God exists. When we say God exists, we're defining him again in our image. We have a definition of what existence is. In Chassidus, there's an expression about Hashem. It's, it comes from the Rambam, Amir Nevuchim. Metzius, bilti, metzius nemtza. <laughs> He's a metzius, which is a bilti metzius nemtza. English, non-existential state of existence. <laughs> In other words, the only thing I mean when I say God exists is that he doesn't not exist. But really, non-existence is as accurate as existence. Because existence is a defined reality. A cup exists. So even if you tell me God is not a cup, he is. In my mind, he is. He's a big cup. <laughs> He's big, he's huge, he's in, it's all existence, you understand? I'm already projecting. I know either you exist or you don't exist. I don't know anything else. This cup exists. There's another cup that doesn't exist. It's not here, it doesn't exist. It exists somewhere else. So I say, Hashem exists. It sounds great. It sounds like a Muna. It's not a Muna. <laughs> it's my Muna. It's a projection. I'm putting Hashem again. That's what I have to say. What should I tell you? It doesn't exist. So now think about this. The atheist who says that he doesn't exist, even though he thinks he's an atheist, there's something very deep about it. What he's really saying is, he doesn't know this, but what he's really saying is, he doesn't exist. The God that you're describing doesn't exist, Taka. What does exist? We don't say it exists. Metzius, bilti metzius, nimtzius. A bilti metzius. What do you mean a bilti metzius? Bilti is no metzius. He is a metzius. He's not a metzius. But that's the point. He's not a reality that you describe as reality because he's more real than that. He's more real than reality. So what we describe as reality, I say this is a reality, this is a reality, this is a reality. This is more real than that. To the point that I can't describe it as reality. I can't even describe it as is. The moment I say God is, I already failed. What exists is. A cup is, a person is, a table is, a home is, the heaven is, the earth is. God is not is. Isness is God. Isness. I-S hyphen N-E-S-S. -S. The moment I say, God, I say, you're a big, you're a big guy, you're a small guy, you're a smart guy. You're, you're, you are this. This is this. I'm already stuck. I'm already stuck. There's God and there's something else. You lost it. Hashem. Isness is Hashem. <laughs> Not God is something. In other words, He exists, and now we're going to describe Him as big, as small. The very definition of isness. So, 
it's not like Hashem is one reality, we're another reality, and we're busy competing with each other. Hashem is the essence of reality, and I already failed myself by saying He is the essence of reality. Or to put it differently, the reality of reality is Hashem, and therefore we all exist in God, because God isness. If you are is something, you exist within isness. And that isness I can't define. Anybody is with me, or uh, you think I'm crazy? And that's the meaning of Rav Of course, yeah. Because Rav Gonshalom is that's the point. That's Yeah. Even when we say infinity, it's better than other words. But again, what, how do we describe infinity? There's a bank account with $99. There's a bank account with $10 million. There's a bank account with $43 billion. Yeah? Buffett's bank account. And then there's a bank account with infinite amount of dollars. But it's all bank accounts. <laughs> but it's infinite one is finite. What do we mean? Infinite means everywhere. But again, there's a where and there's an every. And I say everywhere. I describe infinity vis-a-vis -vis my reality. I have no other way of describing it. So the funny, the fascinating paradox is going to be here that the goof, the flesh, is not capable of a sophisticated understanding of God like the soul. But it's capable of a true understanding. <laughs> because it's simple, because it's primitive, it can't appreciate Chatzres Hashem. But it can appreciate Kel Choy. That it could appreciate. It doesn't do mind games. The body and the flesh, because of their spiritual simplicity, they're brutes, they're ignorant. So therefore they don't play mind games. So they don't turn God into a uh, sophisticated creature like the soul does. So in a very fascinating way, Libi of Sari, when you get them on fire, they go to a much deeper place. The flesh and the body go to a much deeper place. Huh? They skip through the whole richness that the soul develops and concocts, which is beautiful, but it's always a projection of our mind games with what God is. The body and the flesh in its pristine simplicity, in its simplicity, the paradox is that it touches places that the soul doesn't touch. So it's not Chatzos Hashem, it's Kelchai, as he will continue and explain. Very nice. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.